What's up YouTube? Today we're going to do an awesome video on connecting back to your home network over a WireGuard VPN. This is really important because a lot of people are like, hey, I want to be able to reach my services, my apps, whatever I'm running from outside of my house, outside of my home network, but I want to do it safely and securely. And most importantly, I don't want the entire internet to be able to reach my installation or my apps. I just want this for me. So that's a big deal and safety and security is a big deal. Doing that easily is challenging, but not with this container that I'm going to show you today, which is called WG Easy. So I'm going to show you this in the app catalog really fast so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. You'll find it under WG Easy. It looks like this. You'll see the little wire guard dragon. This is the app we're going to be installing today. This is going to be what the dashboard looks like. And when we get done, you're going to see something that looks like this. This is my actual wire guard uh, dashboard for my real TrueNOS instance. And this is all of my clients that I have set up right now, connected and working. So now I'm going to show you how to go through the install and get you to this screen on your own TrueNOS. First thing we're going to want to do in our TrueNOS is come over here and under configs, I'm going to want to create a new data set and I'm going to call it WireGuard. I'm going to use this as generic. And I'm going to change this to allow others to read this only because WireGuard does not run as apps 568 all the time. Um, so for right now, we're going to run it as that because I'm going to deploy it through Dockage and Dockage is not going to have it running through 568. So I'm going to show you both types of installations today. I'm going to show you both Dockage and TrueNOS Scale. I'm going to start with TrueNOS Scale. I'm going to come over here to Discover Apps. And again, I'm going to type in WG Easy. And here's the app. And now I'm going to click Install. And here we go. So the external host is the first thing you're going to want to know. This is going to be the public host name or IP of your VPN server. So you can go one of either two ways. You can install, you can just type in your IP address, something like that, something dot something dot something dot something. And the IP that you're looking for is going to be the public IP of your router. So you're going to have to know that. If you don't know that, you can go to what, you just Google what's my IP. It'll tell you your IPv4 address. The other option is you do something like vpn.example.com, which will be a fully qualified domain name that's pointed back at your public router IP. Now, if you do that, uh, you're probably going to want to have something like a dynamic DNS updater. I'm going to have that on a separate video if you don't have a static IP address. The reason is someone like me is living in my regular domestic home. Uh, the ISP can change my IP at will. So if I have something that vpn.example.com points to my public router IP and then the ISP changes my public router IP, it's going to break my VPN. So I recommend you use either the exact uh, public IP you have or if you use something like vpn.example.com, you have a dynamic DNS updater says running all the time to make sure that you stay safe. A note on this, if you are using Cloudflare, do not proxy this in your Cloudflare dashboard because if you proxy it, it will break the traffic. So that's a note on your external host. If you have more questions about that, post something in the uh, in the video comments or post on Discord. So the external port we use is 51820. This is the standard port for uh, WireGuard. You can change that if you want. I'm going to leave it like that. Set a password if you want to do something uh, pretty secure. So secure password, something like that. The persistent keep alive is set at zero right now. Um, it won't be kept alive. I like to do persistent keep alive at about 120. This is going to basically ping the server every hundred and well, this is going to make sure that all your clients are every two minutes pinging back to the server so that the connection doesn't close. Your device name. This is kind of complicated. I want you guys to look at this and be very specific about this because this is probably wrong. I'm going to right click here and duplicate this tab and come back into TrueNOS. And I'm going to go over to my network. And in this right here is the network name, ENS18. This is what I need. I'm going to copy this value and replace this value right here. Ethernet 0 is wrong. ENS18 is the name of my device. If you have a bridge set up and your bridge is probably named BR0 or BR something, you're going to want to put that name in here. But make sure you get that correct. Otherwise, it will not work. All the other things I'm going to keep default. Um, the allowed IPs is the one thing I actually do have to change as well. I'm going to tell you guys really quick, just a quick primer on the way VPNs work. Most people are going to do this 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. 
that means that 100% of your web traffic, if you have the VPN turned on on the client, like your phone, for example, is going to be routed back to your server before it goes out to the internet. So if I use 0.0.0.0, .0 anything I do on my phone first goes to my house, and then it's going to, well, wherever my server is running in this case, which is my house, and then goes out to the greater internet. So if I'm, for example, in California, and my VPN is turned on, and my server is in New York, uh, everything that I log into is going to think that I'm in the New York time zone in the New York greater area. Um, that's cool, but maybe I don't want that. Maybe, hey, I'm really far away and I don't want all my web traffic to go through my server because it's super slow because I'm really far from my house. Then in that case, I'm gonna to wanna to use what's called a split tunnel. So in this case, my home network is 1099. Right, so all of my addresses are 1099.0. something. So if I put 1099.0.0 slash 24 in here, 1099.0.0 slash 24 means, hey, anything on the 10.99.0 network should go to my WireGuard server. But anything that's not like google.com, like espn.com, like truenos.com or anything like that, that just goes straight from, for example, my phone straight to the out, in, right, straight to the internet. It does not go or is not routed through my home server. The benefit to that is speed. If I'm not routing everything through my server at home, my phone can just go right from where it is directly to the endpoint without any middleman. It makes things a little bit faster depending on where you are in your wireless network. Uh, the benefit to that is too is I can run that all the time and just instantaneously access anything running on my home network without having to touch or switch on or switch off a VPN. I can leave that VPN running in the background at all times and my device will always have access to my 1099 network and all the other addresses, literally all of them will go just out to wherever they're going on the greater internet without being routed. So that's the difference between what's called a split tunnel, which is what this is, and a full tunnel, which is what this is. So that's just a quick demonstration on that. My network configuration, I like to set 51.8.21 for the web UI port. That's what the default uses for uh, all the documentation for WireGuard and WG Easy. Uh, you don't want to leave the host network uh, checked. That's going to allow your connection to be able to reach the greater network that it's on. Um, in this case, we're going to change the storage configuration again to host path, and we're going to go mount tank configs, and then wire guard. That's would be the way we're set up. Everything else is good here. I would leave this and click install for TrueNAS, but I'm not actually going to use TrueNAS for this install. I am going to use Dockage. So let's come back out of here and go to my apps, and let's go to Dockage, open up my web UI. I'm going to do a no stack right here. I'm going to call this WG Easy like that. I'm going to jump over to the wiki and I'm going to copy the Docker Compose file from the wiki. If you want to know where it says, scroll all the way down the left down to networking and then I'm going to click WG Easy and then Docker Compose and then I'm going to click copy right here. Jump back up to my Dockage tab, paste this just like this and again I'm going to need to make some changes here. So really quickly, we're going to leave all this stuff the same. The ports are going to be the same, 51.8.21 and 51.8.20. The volumes I can change if I want. I can change this here, for example, to mount tank configs slash WG easy. And I think that's what I named it. Let me just double check back out here. Data sets, configs. I named it WireGuard. So let's come back out here and change this to WireGuard just like that. Uh, and that's gonna map to the internal ETC WireGuard, which is perfect. Uh, my web port is there. My password hash, we're gonna need to do a password hash. Now you might be thinking, hey, what is a password hash? So what I want you to do is I want you to go back to the wiki and you're gonna scroll down to Docker Compose and this is gonna tell you what all the options do. This is a very convenient table to show you about all these things. So we're gonna come over here to password hash and this is going to be the example and this is going to be what we do. So when set requires a password, then logging into the web UI, see how to generate the hash. The easier way is just to go to the school and generate a hash there to replace any symbols like this. So what we're going to do is uh, instead of generating here, I'm going to go down here to this tool because this is really cool. I'm going to click this little link right here. And now I'm going to type in a string. So I'm going to say this is going to be secure password, just like that. So now I'm going to copy this hash and I'm going back to my dockage and I'm going to paste it right here and I'm going to paste just like that. Now the wiki told me to do one more thing. It says that you have to replace any single dollar sign symbols with double dollar signs. So let's come back out here and this is very simple to do. I'm just going to find the two dollar signs. It was three of them here. Uh, one there. Let's come back out. One there and one there. Notice how the coloring changed. That's very important. Once, you, once I don't have any of those funky colors, I know I did it right. 
That's good. Server IP, in my case, again, we can use whatever we're going to want to use. I'm going to put in a fake server IP just because I don't want you guys to know my public IP. I'm going to use a full tunnel. If I want to do a split tunnel, this is where I would change it. I'm leaving everything else the same. Uh, in this case, I also, just a quick note, I use Quad9 as a DNS instead of Cloudflare, which is 1.1.1.1. No big deal. You can use any DNS you want. Uh, this is pretty much done. We are going to deploy this container. There's one more thing we need to do while this is deploying in the background. We need to go and set up a port forward from our router. So in our router, in my case, I have a Verizon router. Once I log in, I'm going to click the advanced tab and then I'm going to click network and security and then port forwarding. I'm sorry, security firewall and then port forwarding. And you'll see this is where I can change my port forwards. You are going to have to do this on your router. I don't know what model you guys have. If you have Verizon, you should follow my steps. If not, you can just Google how to do this on your router. And I'm going to want to create an entry here for WireGuard. And you can see the one that I've already created. I'll show you the thing up here. Edit. There we go. So in this case, I have a protocol both. It really only needs UDP, but that's fine. I just called it WireGuard. It's going to start on 51.820. It's going to be forwarded to my TrueNAS IP at 51.820 always. So that's the uh, setup I have to forward the port. With WireGuard, you do need a port forward. Do not fear. For those people who are thinking, oh my God, I don't want a port forward. It's so unsafe. It is very safe. The only way you're getting through this port is going to end you at the WireGuard container. Container escapes are difficult, and WireGuard is set up to use this key structure that's going to keep you very safe. Do not worry about port forwards in this case, because the endpoint is known and it's meant to be forwarded to. So we're good there. So once you set up that, you should be pretty good. Let's go back to dockage. I'm going to jump over here to 51821, and now I can type in my password. And there we go, and there are no clients yet. To add a new client, I just click New Client. I give it a name like so, and I click Create. Once I have a new client, I can do a couple things with this. I can show the QR code, and this QR code I can just scan with my phone or I can copy and paste it or whatever and send it to somebody. I can download the file here just like this and then send it to somebody, the .conf file, uh, or I can just delete this client. Um, very cool features of WireGuard and WGEasy. I can back up this configuration setting and save it and then restore to a new instance if I want to. Um, I could also switch clients on and off. So by hitting this little toggle switch, now if this new client tried to log in, they would absolutely fail. So I don't have to, here's the, here's the reason there's a toggle switch and a delete. If I delete and then recreate this client, I have to resend them their key. But if I just want to temporarily stop them from getting on my network, I can just flip the switch and then flip it back on anytime I want to allow access again. So that's pretty much the interface for WireGuard. So I want to do one more thing for you guys. Um, I want to show you guys how this is going to work in the real world. Now you'll notice when I did this Docker's deploy, I set the, um, the WG host is 1234. This isn't actually going to work right here because of course 1234 is not my IP address. But I am going to show you, this is my real WireGuard that runs on my TrueNOS server. Uh, and of course, I can't create two of them because I can't forward the same ports twice and I could have done the whole thing, but this is a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do now is on my pixel, I'm going to open up my WireGuard configuration file uh, and my WireGuard endpoint. I'm going to toggle my switch on for home and boom, you just see, you just saw this little thing flash. So this is what shows me that I am indeed connected. So if I come here now and now I click uh, one of my, for example, local uh, apps that I have running on my server, and I log into it, I can reach it. Uh, and you usually see a little bit of traffic through here. If I wait long enough, you'll see these little waveforms come on down here by this line that shows me traffic is indeed moving. And I'm doing some stuff here. and It's a little bit delayed. It's a little laggy on this screen because on my phone, I'm already searching through and looking at some uh, stuff that's on my home network. So yeah, that's just a really cool way to get this working. My phone is on off my Wi-Fi. It's on an LTE network right now, and I'm browsing my home network uh, like I am absolutely connected to my Wi-Fi. So that's pretty much how that works. I'm going to disconnect that now. I'm going to show you what happens when I cut myself off. I've now turned myself off and then put myself back on my Wi-Fi. And it's going to take a second or two because even though I've cut myself off, it's the console still says that I am connected. So just know that if you see that, like, hey, there's nothing wrong. It's just a little bit of a lag. Uh, but that's the whole uh, display for WireGuard. Once you get this up and running, this is going to give you a secure tunnel back into your network without anybody else being able to see what you're doing, be able to snoop on your data, uh, and it keeps you safe in the rest of the world, allows you to access all of your 
apps or whatever it is you're running, SMB shares, NFS shares, all of those things uh, securely from anywhere on earth. So I hope you guys like this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Please comment below if you have questions, or if you're having any issues. If you're having very technical issues, please jump on the Discord server. It's a great place to find community and support for issues. Uh, if you really want to say thank you, please buy me a coffee.